Welcome to The Woman's Connection. I'm Barry Louise Switzen, your moderator. The Woman's Connection is a program about events shaping women's lives and helping one gain authentic power on a personal or a professional level. So won't you stay tuned? With me today is a woman who has been appointed by four mayors to address this issue known as the quality of life issue here in New York for noise. I would like to welcome Dr. Arlene Bronzeff. Thank you. How did you become so involved with four mayors to address this issue? Well, first of all, I became involved in noise. I, I was interested in looking at the effects of noise on children whose classrooms were adjacent to an elevated train track. And I was able to look at their reading scores for several years and compare the reading scores of the children exposed to the noise to the children taking their classrooms on the quiet side of the building. And I found that children by the sixth grade were one year behind in reading when they were exposed to the elevated train noise. And this study was done over 30 years ago. This was a very dramatic finding. That meant that noise robbed children of their ability to learn. I was very fortunate to be able to persuade the Board of Education to put acoustical ceilings in the classrooms of the children adjacent to the noisy elevated tracks. And the Transit Authority was very cooperative in choosing that site to test out rubber resilient rail pads to quiet the noise. When both abatement procedures were in place, a public official asked me to go back to the school to see if it helped. I was quite nervous about doing that, but went back to the school a couple of years later, looked at the reading scores before the abatements were in place and then after the abatements, and found that whereas the children were a year behind before the abatement, once the rooms were quieted, the children on both sides of the building, adjacent to the tracks on the quiet side, were reading at the same level. And that was a very dramatic finding. It meant that children were adversely affected by noise, their learning, and there's many studies to show that children's cognitive language and learning are indeed impeded by noise, but it also showed that if you did something about it, children would benefit. And it was the second part of the study that really stuck out in my mind, that we could do something. So I then began to do research in noise, looked at the effects on people when they live near airports, also wrote articles, wrote chapters and books, and I guess the mayors of the city of New York looked at this work and said maybe this individual could advise on noise. So I think it was my research that attracted the mayors, but there was something else. I just didn't use my research to get published articles and brownie points as a professor. I used my research to make a difference, to change the lives of people. And I guess the mayors of the city of New York wanted someone not only who was a college professor who did research, but someone who would use the findings of the studies to try to improve the lives of the people in the city. And that's why I think the four mayors have asked me to assist them. Arlene, you've accomplished so much. How would you define noise? Noise is generally defined as unwanted sound that intrudes upon an individual's activities. It's sound that an individual does not want at the moment that person is either reading, thinking, watching television. And often that sound is not only unwanted, it comes in suddenly, it's uncontrollable, it's unpredictable, and it disrupts the activity in which the individual is engaged in. Would you say there's been a rise in noise lately versus 400 years ago? Noise has gone back to the time of the Romans. And uh, I, I tell people that when our founding fathers were working on our papers and the Constitution in, in Philadelphia, they actually put dirt on the cobblestones outside the building so that they would not hear the wagons and the horses going over the cobblestones and not intrude upon their writing this very important document. I wish this story passed through uh, more than my just telling it here because it really t told you something that individuals in order to think, to produce, to write, uh, they need some quiet. Now as far as has it increased, 
uh, in the 20th century, of course it's increased in the 20th and now in the 21st, because we now have airplanes and cars, and we also have the, you know, the uh, railroad trains, and, and we also have more people. And I, I think people uh, using their loud music to intrude upon others, they don't keep it to themselves. So even though the modern inventions of the 20th and 21st century may have heightened the decibel levels surrounding us, I think what we also are facing today are people who are rude, impolite, and discourteous. And even though I think there are ways that technically we can lessen the din of cars and trains and airplanes, uh, I don't know how well I could do with educating people about respecting other people's rights. If we could do that, many tenants living in buildings in the city of New York would not be complaining about noise. What are the laws surrounding the quality of life issue concerning noise in an apartment building? Well, first of all, we have the noise code in the city of New York. And I have to give kudos uh, to the mayor, uh, to the Department of Environmental Protection, and of course to the city council who passes laws in this city. And they did revise the noise code a year and a half ago in response to all the calls that come into 311. Uh, about a year and a half ago, 350,000 calls dealing with noise. So they did revise the code. Interestingly enough, the code doesn't work as well when it comes to tenant versus tenant noise. Because in, in buildings, for the most part, you're dealing with a lease. And tenants are entitled to the quiet within their apartment. It's the warranty of habitability. As far as the noise code is concerned, if a person in the building were hearing the cooling unit from the building next door and called the Department of Environmental Protection, that then an agent can come over, measure the decibel level, and look and see if the noise exceeds what is stated in the code. So when we're dealing with the code, we're dealing with the noises on the outside. But we're not dealing with the noise from tenant to tenant. That's with the lease. Yes, if a tenant had a very loud party, you could call the police department, and the police would come o over and tell the people uh, who are making the noise to quiet down. Of course, after the police left, the level of sound would go up again. But we're really talking about neighbors playing loud music, and loud enough for the person to hear and intrude on the person's sleep. Or if the person does not put floor covering on the floor, and the heels are going across uh, the floor at five in the morning when the person gets up for work. Those are the sounds we're talking about. And there we have to depend on leases. And yes, tenants, shareholders under the lease are entitled to the quiet enjoyment of their apartments. But again, it has to be reasonable. That's what comes up. If a grandchild is visiting a grandmother one Sunday, and makes a little noise that day, and that child doesn't come over maybe once every four or five months. It may be unreasonable to make a fuss over that sound, but it's unreasonable to be intruded upon every night with loud music, banging, walking across the floor, screams and shouts. This would be unreasonable, and the law does speak to the unreasonableness of behavior. That's fantastic, because you've just addressed a zillion questions I've had. What can somebody do if they have all these problems? I, I complimented our founding fathers, and compliment them particularly since they gave us the Bill of Rights, but they, they failed in one other area. They didn't give us a Bill of Responsibilities. With rights come responsibilities. And to live in a society that's civilized, you need both. And people have to respect the rights of other people. So for that, we have to turn to the lease. Now, if indeed a neighbor was being intrusive beyond reasonableness, then the individuals could, could knock at the door next, you know, next door and say, please. If the person is a caring, respectful individual, the person will say, I shouldn't have put the TV on that loudly. I'm sorry, and correct it. Too often that doesn't happen, and so the next approach is to the managing agent or to the landlord. And it really behooves the landlord to do something about it because the lease is between you and the landlord. 
it is not between you and the neighbor. And if that neighbor has been very noisy, then that neighbor is violating your rights and it is the landlord that has to take the action against the neighbor or the managing agent and write and inform the individual about the noise. One thing I would suggest though for landlords and managing agents, it might be wise to periodically send out a notice throughout the entire building to all the shareholders, to all the renters, reminding them of the need to keep quiet at times, particularly at night, in respect to your neighbors. These are called prompts. In psychology, we use prompts to remind people to be respectful. Curb your dog when you see that prompt in front of a nice flower bed. That's, that tells you, okay, I, I should be cautious. So I would like to urge all landlords or managing agents listening to this program to try to just remind their tenants and remind their shareholders. And the next thing I'd like to say is to take the complaint seriously. In some independent research I've done, I found that the managing agents and landlords do not always take this complaint seriously. I must add though, in the last few weeks having to deal with some tenant-tenant problems, the landlords I've approached have been quite reasonable in, in responding, but they have to see it as their obligation. Now, do not say we're living in the city of New York, so you have to deal with noise. When you walk into your home, you are tuning out the sounds of the city. You are coming home to rest, to watch TV, to read, to converse. And you're closing your door expecting some quiet. That is a reasonable request. So don't say it's the city of New York, deal with it. Again, I did say that occasionally if the person has a party, let me suggest to people, if you're going to have a party, it's going to be allowed, invite your next door neighbor. How many times do you celebrate 90th birthday parties as my neighbor did recently? So it's the reasonableness. Now, if the landlord does not respond, if the managing agent does not respond, then the sh tenant may have to go to court. You do not have to hire an attorney. The housing court will provide legal advice to you. Your action will be against the landlord for not taking action against the tenant. But you have to have evidence. You have to have proof. You have to have called up the superintendent to have listened to the noise to verify it. Or you may have a neighbor on the other side that says, yes, I'm similarly bothered. You just can't walk into court and say, this neighbor is bothering me. So you have to have evidence. Even when you approach the managing agent, when you approach the landlord, come in with some evidence, make your case, make sure it's a reasonable case, make sure you're not intruding on other people, but stand up for your rights. You're entitled to the quiet enjoyment of your apartment. Arlene, how would you suggest getting this evidence that you can present in a, you know, like in a court of law? There are acoustical engineers that have equipment that can be left in your apartment and it, you know, it could record. But you know what happens when you hi hire someone, it costs money. So it's gonna be costly to get an acoustician to come and place the equipment to pick up the sounds at night. So there's a cost element here. And many people can't afford that and are reluctant to do it. Then also there's the question of the evening that you have the equipment may be the evening that the person next door goes away. And then you've spent all this money and you don't have the evidence. I, I would suggest trying to find out from the neighbor on the other side, the neighbor above. Do it with maybe a note under the person's door uh, requesting whether they're bothered by some noise in the building. You can get some proof by asking the handyman, the superintendent, to just come in, in and listen to the sound. Sometimes that works. But I have to tell you that getting evidence is very difficult. It is not easy. But let me add something else to a person who, uh, if you have a person that's very noisy, very difficult, very problematic. I once called up a landlord to complain about someone. And he said, look, lady, you know, this is New York City. Tell the person to just get on with her life. I said, should I also tell that to your 
superintendent whom the individual attacked. Is it true that he is smoking in the hallways and that's also a violation? What you may find very often with a person who really goes beyond with the noise, that that person is a difficult tenant or a difficult renter or a difficult shareholder in other ways. And so that when you bring up the issue of noise, you will probably find there are other ways that this person is disturbing the building and this can complement your particular complaint. How do you handle it when you know other tenants are bothered by the noise? They've pounded on the wall to make sure that they're quiet, but the thing of it is they won't go to management, they won't go to the doorman, they won't go to the superintendent. How do you handle that? That is a major problem. I'm going to use Obama's words. You become an organizer. You have to make the effort to get other people in the building together. I, I'm going to use another example uh, of a building on East 80th Street in Manhattan where a few people got together. They all were complaining about noise. They asked me to come to speak to the group. I did. I also did call their managing agent. And we got a note to all the tenants to try to keep quieter. Organizing, you have to do that. I know people don't like to do it. That's why so many people get away with being abusive. That's why people continue to make noise. People are frightened. And I'm going to tell you a group of people that I come in contact with that are especially frightened. And those are single women living alone. Uh, they, they don't know how to go about organizing. They don't know how to get a coalition going. So I would make another suggestion. We have council members that live in that dis our district. The council member is the closest person to city problems that we have. And we have some very good council people that responded. I would make a call to a council person. I would ask that person to help us. If I were an older person and there were a university nearby that had a law school, and I know that a number of these law schools do help senior citizens, I'd go and do that. So if you're not an organizer, learn how to defend yourself. We have to do that because if we don't do it for ourselves, we're not going to be able to enlist other people to help us. So make the call to the council person. Make the call to the district manager of your community district. Visit a law school. Ask if there's some help for senior citizens. Try to be a little more assertive. And I think if more people in the city did that, then we'd find much more responsiveness from the landlords and the managing agent. Calling 311 is one solution. Is there any way that you can make an emphasis without being a nuisance to 311? Well, if it's a noisy air conditioner in the building next door, their 311 would uh, forward the call to the Department of Environmental Protection. And from what I've heard, they've been very responsive in sending agents over to measure the sounds of the noisy cooling unit on the building next door, or if it's the bar next door or the restaurant, they've been quite good on that. And if it's in violation, those uh, owners are going to get uh, ticketed and they're going to have to pay a fee. But I, th I think in terms of the police, they're not the individuals that you're going to get a response from with respect to tenant to tenant. It's just not going to work that way. You're going to have to get your landlord to move on it. And the ways I've suggested before have to be employed. Because if it's a noisy person, or if there are two very noisy uh, tenants in the building, I, I know that other people are going to be upset. It's true. They individually might not make the complaint. But in groups, there is strength. And I, I'm going to quote again from Obama, but I don't have to do that because all the way back when I first moved into my first rent control department, I can say I organized and I got tenants together to do something. In numbers, there is strength, but again, call your council person. That's why the person is there. Go to the senior citizen center. Try to get some help legally, particularly if you're older, you're entitled to it. And Try to get someone, maybe a younger member of the family, to advocate on your behalf if you're older. Or if you feel that there's someone that you know that can do it, 
turn to that person. Now, I hate to say on this program that if you're listening and you really need some help, I'm going to say it, though. Um, contact the Council on the Environment, and if I got your call, I would help you. What about barking dogs or piano playing or a, vi a harp being played? How can you control the noise? It's an infringement on your senses. Well, let's take barking dogs. My daughter had a barking dog problem. Of course, she called the police before she called her mother, but then she decided to call her mother because her mother did a better job. So it ended up, though, I did get the police because the dog that was barking had been tied outside and left to bark for several hours. It was the dog that needed help. It was the dog owner that was being abusive of the dog, while it was also true that my daughter and son-in-law could not sleep. So in that case, we helped the dog. Dogs live in my building. I have a building with dogs. I have a dog on the floor in which I live. I never hear the dog. Yes, occasionally a dog will bark when someone comes in, but good tenants, good shareholders also know that dogs are not to be barking constantly. And I think if a dog is barking way beyond, I'd look to how good the owner of that dog is. So dog barking, a minimal, but the people I know that own dogs in my building I take care of their dogs and, and we don't hear them. So that should not be a problem. Now, what about music? Oh, is the child next door taking some lessons? Occasionally, if it's at from three to four, you may have to deal with it. But you should not have a person living next door to you who's using her apartment as a place to practice, as a business. Now, that is not allowed. So I, I think you have to look into the situation, try to find out if it's something that will be occasional or is it going to be continuous. And if it's continuous, then you're going to have to look to some sound abatement. I, I wish that the people who are putting up these new buildings in the city of New York are paying attention to insulation. In, in England, after the war, the British had to put up their apartment buildings very quickly, and they did not insulate them well. So if you want to talk about noise complaints, look at some of the literature after the Second World War and listen to the complaints of the people living in London who could hear their next door neighbors having sex and next door neighbors using the bathroom. So one of the things I'd also like to mention, in, in terms of construction, there are materials to be used. In fact, um, Owens Corning on its website has a list of quiet products that people could purchase in constructing homes, buildings, that would make life better for all people. So it, it's not just a matter of how do I get my neighbor to be quieter? Let's also try to be forward thinking and make sure that when we put up our buildings, we use materials that do not allow the transmission of sound from one room to another so quickly. And what about windows? We are living in a city with lots of horns outside, with buses passing, with trains overhead. We should also put in better windows. So I'm making a plea to the people involved in the construction industry, but more to the developers, because I think the engineers and the architects know that they could quiet the building, but in curbing costs, it's the developers that often go for the cheaper materials. What if you have a neighbor that practices their instrument so loud that it infringes on your quality of life? Whose responsibility is it to soundproof the apartment? I would say it's the neighbors. If a neighbor is going to use an apart the apartment to practice on an instrument, knowing that this may intrude on the people living next door, then it's the neighbor's obligation to create an environment where the sound will not be transmitted next door. So I do not believe it's the person living next door. I, I think you should go to a sound recording studio uh, and you should practice in facilities that are designed for practicing music. That you occasionally play the piano for a half hour a day, that's one thing. But if you're going to be using it as part of your profession, then you're really using the apartment for professional purposes. And that apartment has not been built to deal with the sound that can be transmitted next door. 
So to me, it's the individual who's creating the sound that is responsible. Notice the word responsible. That is responsible not to intrude on other people. So I'd like to get this, this through. Yes, we have rights. People have a right to do a lot of things in their apartment, but they do not have the right to intrude on others, and it's their responsibility to refrain from doing that. What effects can the noise have on you? Noise creates stress, and of course stress can lead to physiological effects. Uh, stress can affect our blood pressure, our heart, and there are studies that indicate that stress does indeed have this kind of effect upon our, beha uh, our behavior, our physiological behavior. But stress also changes us mentally, makes us angry. It can create rage. And sometimes that anger gets out of hand. We not only knock at the door of our neighbor, but we begin to shout at that person. We begin to scream. We don't just ask our landlord, who hasn't responded to two of my earl uh, earlier requests to quiet the neighbor, we shout at the landlord, we scream. Noise does create aggression in individuals, making people very angry. And there are instances of people getting so angry that they have attacked their neighbors and physically have harmed them. I, I would suggest that in the city of New York, it's raising a voice. I, I can understand when the neighbor hasn't listened. But I also know that the rage and anger that's in you that you're trying to control might affect you even more physiologically. And I would really urge landlords and managing agents and boards of directors to try to understand that people are so angry and so upset, and so frustrated, that you're creating an unhealthy atmosphere in the building if you let the noise get out of hand. So I'm not suggesting that the neighbor may physically attack, though these things have happened, what I'm saying is you do not want people to have such anger, such frustration, such distress. This isn't healthy. And if you want to run a building where neighbors are living together harmoniously, I would try to respond to the complaint. This is fantastic. Arlene, I can't tell you how excited I am about this. In the closing moments of the show, what would you like to leave the audience with? Well, first of all, I'd like to say that noise affects health. Noise affects quality of life. And the World Health Organization has stated that noise does impact on quality of life. And that means that people have the right to some quiet in their lives. People have a right to watch television, to read, to converse, to rest. This is what makes quality of life. We have found that noise does affect health best literatures in the cardiovascular area where noise has been found to cause vascular, vascular diseases. Actually, a recent study coming out of Sweden has linked noise to heart attacks. Now, I'm going to say that just very uh, slowly again. A recent study, that needs further validation. But what doesn't need further validation is the fact that noise diminishes our quality of life. And we don't have to have symptoms of heart disease or breathing disease or high blood pressure to say our quality of life has been diminished. A good quality of life is not merely the absence of symptoms. It means being able to engage in activities in a way that you feel comfortable and less stressful. And the second thing I'd like to say is that people do have the right to quiet. We always talk to the noisemakers, and they say they have the right to make noise, but we also have the right to quiet. We're not being unreasonable. We're not saying silence, total absence of sound, just a reasonable, quiet environment in which we can carry out our activities. And yes, this is possible in large cities. Yes, this is possible in the city of New York. And I also want people to understand that if they believe that they are being intruded upon, speak out. It's important to do that. Look what speaking out did to one young man in this country. He went from being an organizer to being president of the United States. Now, I'm not saying that anyone speaking out of noise is going to rise to that position, but speaking out will get you ahead. And you have to really believe that you have the right 
to a reasonable, quiet environment, particularly in your home, and do something about it. Arlene, thank you so much. I have enjoyed this program immensely, and I hope you have enjoyed and learned something about noise in the city of New York and it helps you to improve your quality of life. If you have any questions, Arlene or myself would be very happy to answer them. You can reach us at here at the Women's Connection. Look forward to hearing from you. Bye now.